Welcome to the Pasho Perspective, a place where I share my perspective on everything in the space between life and death. I am your host, Pasho. Well, my Pachos Chachos, it is that time again, another week, another item on my mind. And so here is my perspective. Uh, I was going over Jordan Peterson's rule number 12 with my classes this week to finalize the book before we uh, move on to other self-help kind of ideas uh, like uh, cognitive behavior therapy, um, you know, and verbal judo and things like that, which I've done a podcast on. You should check it out. But um, this uh, this generation, you know, I was trying to inspire them. I, I kind of have this speech where, you know, rule number 12, in case you don't know uh, or don't remember, again, check out my podcast is pet a cat when you encounter one on the streets. And before I show the video of Jordan Peterson explaining himself to Dave Rubin on the Rubin show, uh, the Dave Rubin show, you know, I I like them to do some critical thinking before and make some predictions as to what Jordan Peterson could be alluding to. And so the first thing I ask them is, you know, do you have any interpretations? You know, and if they don't come up with anything, then I try to guide them with some questions and I'll ask them, why a cat? Why not a dog? Why not a kangaroo? Why not a turtle? You know, and for those who own cats, they get it right away because cats are finicky. Cats are not incredibly loyal like dogs are. You know, dogs, God bless them, but they are loyal to a fault. I mean, you can beat them and they will sidle up right to your side, wanting your love and attention. Sorry for, it probably doesn't even know, and it doesn't care. It just wants to love you and be loved. You know, and it breaks my heart that dogs are like that because they deserve a better species to take care of them. But I digress. And so they say, well, cats, you know, they don't always come to you. And so when a cat does come to you, it's kind of a special thing. And that's, you know, what Jordan Peterson is talking about. You know, it's that special thing that when life gets hard, as it certainly will, what do you have to continue that joy in the background of your life? Because remember, the goal is not happiness. Happiness is a response to something. Happiness is fleeting. You're not always happy. You know, somebody calls out your name some stranger, you know, runs up to you and asks for your autograph and you're feeling great. And then, you know, like in uh, Major League Baseball, they say, yeah, you're in the Hall of Shame. And then all of a sudden your happiness disappears. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's fleeting like that. We want joy. And so petting a cat, or in other words, recognizing and acknowledging those wonderful encounters that although we may consider to be trivial, are actually the reminders of why we suffer and why we go through life and why we will not make the decision to throw this present away. And even with that, you know, I'll, uh, I'll give them uh, an example that, you know, I believe in angels and demons and... Anytime I get a good parking space anywhere, you know, a drugstore, convenience store, movie theater, anything, I I always thank my Chita, who is my mother's mom. And, you know, I know she's looking down on me. And uh, I know that, you know, she does what she can to help me even still. And I'm grateful for that. And because I have that idea, you know, I um, I kind of push the idea onto my students that when we lose someone in our life who is important to us, if we don't seize the moment and decide to live our best life, if instead we do what I see is all too typical in teenagers, to throw in the towel, to give up, 
to say life's not fair, life sucks, it was better with this person there, and now I'm empty. You're going to kill your grandma twice. Because it's bad enough she's got to die and leave her physical body, although it's great that she gets to join her lord. But I like to believe that they're looking down on us, and imagine looking down on your grandchild and witnessing them giving up. And so everything that you lived for and sacrificed, which you didn't have to brag, you didn't have to make them a list of this is what I could have become had you not come into my life and become a financial and emotional burden. You know, they did it because they wanted you, they wanted us to have an amazing life. And I go back to the trials of the slaves Because I remember in the 90s, there being so many beautiful movies about the strength of slaves. It didn't focus on their victimization and their oppression, although it showed it to a point where you always wanted to look away in horror. But it was more about the spirit, the human spirit, even in a slave who endures whippings, and name callings that I can't even imagine. And they really did this. And it would have been so tempting to just give it up and die and do something that will end your life, but they didn't. Because they knew the value of their roots. They knew the value of the tree from which they came in Africa. And they were going to be gosh darned if they didn't pass that root along and place it in the soil of America. And they did. And they raised some pretty amazing and beautiful people. Proud people. Not that kind of pride, which is destructive, but a proud people that despite their lack, they had joy. They knew family was that gateway to joy. And it didn't matter how much money you had. It mattered how many hands held yours when you said goodbye. And to just all of a sudden decide, you know what? I'm going to have sex with the same kind of sex, which means no procreation, which means no children, no grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and so on and so forth. The line ends there. The root of my tree dries up, shrivels up, and dies. And you know what? Maybe sometimes... That's all part of the plan. Some trees give bad fruit and need to die. But I don't believe that in any of my students, that they're bad fruit. And if they just came back to who they are meant to be and chose a family, they could pass along those wonderful roots of our ancestors of the generations that have worked so hard and for so long to get us to this point. That is the best way to honor them, is to live a good life. So if they are indeed looking down at us, they can be proud, not just of us and our accomplishments, but of the sacrifices that they certainly made to fit us into their lives to give us life and meaning and purpose and to teach us what it's like to be a human being and more so the wonderful fruit of your family's tree. We need to collect artifacts from the past and we need to pass them forward. And who are we going to pass them forward to but our children? And we must choose to have them. And even after this speech, and some classes, heavy in the rainbow, they laugh. They think I'm a fool and a child. And perhaps they're right on both accounts. My Lord said it would take the faith of a child to enter into heaven, and so I look at my children and I 
try to replicate their faith. They have good faith. They are good children. And one day we'll be the leaders of a great generation that will bring back our country and place it into the hands of our Father. I have hope. And I hope you do too, my Patos Chachos. Thank you so much for listening to me. I hope you don't think it was too much of a rant. If you would, leave me some comments in the comment section. I would love, love, love to hear what you guys have to say, what you would like me to talk about. If you're even enjoying anything would be great as well. Until next week, my Pachos Chachos. God bless.